I'm back, everybody. Welcome back. It's lunchtime. It's 12 noon. Hope everyone had a nice little break. Those of you that didn't see me this morning, you got some emails that you could be uh, uh, tentative to. And um, all of the assignments were given out today, um, this morning, and, and one lump sum because I'm working my booty off. And I'd like to not have to send those out so much to you. We're making today a little bit easy. Just getting familiar with our anatomy and physiology chapter. I'll be taking roll and making sure that um, everyone is accounted for. I got my roll call done earlier. Sent that off to Jeremy and Katie. We got that going. I'm going to take a few notes again like I did just uh, uh, in our first session. There's a few facets of the cells, physiology, and anatomy that all of you need to know for your state board. And what we basically do is we don't put you through like a high school course of um, like your uh, difficult task of, uh, of anatomy and physiology. It's just main mainly getting those few points that uh, PSI and TDLR require of you to know. So um, up here on the board, and I'll try to move out of the ways that you can see. Let me also pull this uh, desk just a little closer, and hopefully this word, if there's a glare on that, that says cell. I'll give you a few minutes to get your paper out. It's going to be nice when we have high-tech equipment all installed in the school and I can do this standing up in my normal work environment. So we'll be getting there soon, but it's just all a process during this time. So all of you just have to bear with me in the small little white writing board. So our cell has the ability, uh, it's first of all, it's our basic unit of all living things. This is pretty much what you're going to see when you, uh, when you answer that question at state board. It carries out life, and there's a variety of them that vary in, or there's cells that vary in size throughout the body, and there's millions of them all over the, all over the body. So the cell contains a cell membrane, the protoplasm, and the nucleus. The nucleus is which carries out our, has and stores our DNA, our genetics. Some of y'all got to be good uh, artists, I'm sure, on your last uh, segment. Looking at your uh, looking at your emails, I'm sure you were like, oh my gosh, I've got to draw arms and heads and skulls and bones and all that good stuff. But i got to find a way to give you hours and you've got to be able to um, um, show your part in all of this too, so. You can print them out. I don't mind today at all because um, I'm a little I'm a little fussy because I've got a lot of work to do and and I'm okay with printing it out and then you labeling them. For those of you who um, uh, have a larger screen, you can uh, put that a piece of paper over the top and the light bleeds through and it makes a nice little um, opportunity for you to sketch your your sketches. So right now, let's just jot this down. Cell is our basic unit of all living things that carries out life contains a cell membrane, protoplasm, our nucleus, which has our genetics in it from the DNA. So then we want to break down 
that the protoplasm is a jelly. So the protoplasm is like all in here. I'm going to draw a little line to that. And it's a jelly-like substance. Okay. Hope I'm not going too fast. I know some of you are probably just, oh, it's 12.05. I know some of you are probably just now kind of clocking in. The other thing is, is it gets 75 to 80% water. Some of those other structures that uh, you saw on your image, those little pictures also are little structures within the cell, like mitochondria, the rib uh, uh, ribosomes, organelles. Those are other structures. But right now, um, what you're wanting to study and, and really focus on is protoplasm, um, the word cell, basic unit of all living things, the nucleus. These are like the high points of what you need to know for your uh, testing and your industry related material. So fortunately, y'all don't have to uh, go into such depth like high school students have to do for the SAT and all of those tests. I don't know that I could remember all of that. It's been a long time ago. Now, um, I don't have another color marker, I don't think. This one might be. Let me see if this one's a different color. Yeah, there we go. So then we have the cell membrane, and it kind of surrounds the cell. And that cell membrane, it allows, I don't know if that marker's too light. Yes, it is. The cell membrane allows substances to enter and then leave again. Allows substances to enter and leave. So really and truly in one half little board or half sheet of paper, what you need to remember for your uh, material is that the cell again is the basic unit of all living things that carries out life. It contains a cell membrane that allows substances to enter and leave. It has protoplasm, which is pretty much anywhere from 70 to 80%. 80 jelly-like substance composed primarily of water. Then it has the nucleus, which is in the very center. And I won't draw an arrow, but the nucleus is in the center. And that's where our DNA and our genetics come from, is the cell nucleus. One thing that you might want to know is, or put down on your paper, is that the cell membrane right here is also called a cell wall. So on the test, they could say cell wall or cell membrane, and that's really tricky. I feel like on a state board written exam, I feel like that can be um, um, uh, very, very tricky. So cell wall and cell membrane, are, are fine. Let's see, Miss Gracie says, I have sound and voice, fantastic, Miss Gracie, good. I don't know if y'all knew her mom had been very, very, very ill. They were very concerned about her well-being. 
She's an elder woman that lives in Laredo and she's coming back home. She was not doing well. And I'm um, so happy that she's doing so much better. I've been thinking about you. So let's review that again. Cell, basic unit of all things, carries out life. It has a cell wall, also called a cell membrane. It has protoplasm that's jelly-like that has other structures that are um, amazing for our for our human cells. Composed primarily of water, a jelly-like substance. It's a lot of water, actually. And um, there are substances that are allowed to come and come and go uh, through this cell wall, this cell membrane. And then DNA is found in the nucleus. So you had a little image here of a human cell that you needed to identify on your paper. And I'm going to be giving you the answers to that. It looked like this in your handout. Those of you who have not gotten an opportunity to look at that handout, you may want to take this time because I'll be giving you the answers numbers 1 through 11 so that you can fill that out, complete it, and then turn it in at five o'clock for your clock hour. So uh, I'll be giving that to you in just a few minutes. Um, so you have, you know, you have those ribosomes, the Golgi complex, the, all those other little um, structures that uh, support the cell that are inside the cell floating around in here with the protoplasm. Okay. Um, looking for my napkin. I don't have an eraser here. So you have to bear with me. I'm going to erase that. Hopefully I didn't erase too soon. Well, I was going to leave part of it up here in case some of you are coming in a minute or two late. Okay, so then we have the nucleus. So let's, uh, uh, we talked about the nucleus. So there is, um, hold on, I gotta think about this. I don't do this every time. Uh, nucleoplasm. So there's two plasmas is what I'm trying to say. Within, let's go ahead and put within the cell. Okay. So in the nucleus, the center of the cell, there is a, another plasma called cytoplasma. That's a T-O, C-Y-T-O. Sorry about that. And it is the side of it's the plasma that's inside the nucleus. Okay, so we have this, and here's the nucleus, and the cytoplasma is inside the nucleus. Protoplasma here. Okay, nuke. Uh, sorry, that's an arrow. The cytoplasm is right here, and that is food for growth of the cell. So that's the difference in those, and that can be kind of confusing, even for me. I have to, I have to kind of think for a minute because I'm just not concentrating on this that often, <laughs> understandably. So protoplasma and cytoplasma. I don't think that you're going to be asked about cytoplasma on the test. I think you could be on this one right here. But just remember, in here, again, it's where DNA is stored, your genetics. So if you want to draw another image of that, you could.
Um, let me see. Emily, I'm going to give you all those answers. Number 11, are you asking about number one through 11? Yes, one through 11 is going to be what we, yes, that's what we're going to, go, I'm going to give you all the answers too, so y'all can fill those in. Okay. Did I go too fast? I think we may have had a couple of people clocking in a minute or two late. Hopefully I didn't. So when the cell reproduces, it divides, and we talked about this before, it divides into mitosis, that division is called mitosis, or daughter cells, and we talked about that in a previous chapter, and that division is called mitosis. And when production is really good and those cells are healthy cells, they divide and then they become new cells and they're constantly re reproducing and uh, they're healthy and they're wonderful. When toxins are in there, what's going to happen is they're going to die. So if, so if there is disease or toxin, The cells die. So we want um, the cells to continue to replenish themselves, to continue to prosper and be healthy and divide and reproduce and keep, a, keep the normal speed of life with cell renewal continuously happening. So If they don't do that, we're going to have some disease. We're have, we, uh, we obviously have disease and toxins in that cellular growth, and then they die. But we want them to divide into daughter cells. So let's go over this again one more time. Okay, everyone. Here's the cell. Nucleus is in the center. What is this on the outside? There's a there's a little shield that allows substances to enter and to leave. What is that called? I like the drawing too, Chandler. I've just been so flooded with too much in my head. If I seem like a goofball right now, I, I kind of am. If you saw my de my uh, kitchen table right now, it's an absolute nightmare. Okay, that's the cell membrane. So the outside is cell membrane, also called cell wall. So cell membrane or cell wall. Substances enter and come out. So toxins can get into those cells, causing them to not flourish and not be healthy. In, the, in this substance right over around here, that substance is called what? Protoplasm. And again, these are just the things that you need to know for your state board. So this is a full image of a cell. The center structure is called the nucleus. And then the jelly-like substance that's inside of here is the cytoplasm. Contain, and this is growth. This is food and growth and nutrients for the health of the cell. And then we have the organelles that are all within there. So really and truly, guys, all you need to know is the cell is the basic unit of all living things. There's millions of them. By keeping our body healthy and free of toxins, they are going to divide and reproduce with mitosis, and we remain healthy. Cells that cannot reproduce, um, our bodies begin to de degenerate, and, and they're infected with toxins or, you know, uh, disease. So really and truly, you need to know cell, basic unit of all living things, nucleus where DNA is stored and we get our genetic offspring, cytoplasm is that jelly-like substance within that little nucleus that's providing growth to the health of the cell. 
Then we have the protoplasm, which is right all in here. It's a jelly-like substance with a lot of other organelles and structures. Then we have the cell membrane or the wall that holds it together, but does allow things to come to pass uh, in and out. Let me see on my notes. I have a bunch of scribbled notes that maybe I want to tell y'all. Uh, no, that's it on that. Okay, so those answers on your human cell from your from your handout that you got today, that one, I want to go ahead and write those down for you because some of those um, words are kind of big and trying to listen to them. So you're going to jot these down so that you can send those to me uh, with your image and your picture of yourself. Not all of these um, items that are listed on the human cell, this was a very, very basic human cell. Uh, so most of you probably know from other forms of education that you've had, there's a lot more going on, but you just need to know some basics. And so we're just going to, uh, this is pretty much all we're going to discuss on the human cell because the only portion of the state board that you need to know for your industry related uh, material. So uh, I'm going to write them down. So I'm looking at the top box of uh, uh, letter A. And uh, can y'all tell me, those of you who might have done it and may know what this is, it starts with an M. Do y'all uh, remember what, uh, uh, what, that, what that letter A box is? Let's see, I'm going to put A in that. I mean, they're actually, it's, a, it's 11 items, but I'm going to list them A, B, the 11 yeah 11 so the first one is perfect it's mitochondria i don't know if i'm spelling it right but i hope that i am so there's an image of mito mitochondria uh in your image right there on the uh, drawing that you did i'm sure your drawing looks fabulous and then b are your ribosomes. Now again, I do not think State Board is going to ask you, but as we go towards the end of the week, I am going to give you the State Board related questions like I try to do at the end of every chapter. And we're going to see if uh, we do find some questions with these because that test is being updated regularly. And if they are, then we'll go back and we'll look at those and make sure that we have all of those. So that's our mitochondria. Hopefully y'all can see the board. C, but, uh, do y'all know what C is? If you're looking at your page and maybe you haven't, maybe you haven't uh, even uh, filled this out yet, looking at that image right here, it's pointing to just pretty much no item at all. So we just talked about that. So what would that be? Perfect, protoplasm. I'll make a little note on this sheet because I don't like the way they filled this out here. Can't read that letter very good. That was C, right? Yeah. Okay, the next one. We have D. What are those D? I don't know that anyone would know what these are unless maybe you've got a great memory or you had time to look at it. So that, does anyone want to give us a stab at and tell me what you might have found for letter D? Might have been a hard one. Now, I only kind of am familiar with it because my son had to do a, a structure on this one. So they call this one the smooth endoplasmic. And I'm going to spell the last name. And we know that we're not going to see that one on state board. I've never seen that one on state board. Let me see if anybody. Oh, reticulum. Very good, Chloe. Reticulum. And hopefully I spelled reticulum right. R-E-T-I-C-U-L-M. Let me see if that's how you spelled it, Chloe. Yep. 
smooth reticulum. And again, I don't think that you might, we might uh, find that these right here we need to study more, but I don't think so. This one you're definitely, I don't believe you'll be seeing that on your state board at all. Maybe on an eighth grade um, science test, but not for cosmetology, we hope. Okay, let me see. We are A, B, C, D. Let me look at my next. Okay, our next picture is E. And the next picture that you had for E. So you have a smooth and a rough. So the next one is the rough. And it's just, if you'll look at the outside of the edges, it's just uh, more jagged around those edges. And that's how you're going to determine the, the difference between them two. It's just amazing to me when we think about all the all the things that are going on in our human body. Wow. So you got rough and you got smooth. And I don't know about y'all, but it was like a fortune to go and make one of these things, um, a structure or a cell. You know, you go to Michael's and even though they told you to find recyclable materials, it was still, a, you know, several dollars to try to do it. Okay, let me see. We're A, B, C, D, E. Okay, we are on F. So F is at the top. And F is our Golgi complex. Again, one that you may or may not have to know for state board. I don't think you will, but we're gonna cover our base just in case. And that's an I, G-O-L-G-I, Golgi complex. And then G. The vacuole. I think I spelled that right. There might be an E in there. I think it actually is. Back here only, I believe, maybe an E on there. Now, I remember when we made ours, that's like a huge, uh, one of the larger structures within the, uh, within the cell. But again, I don't think that you're going to feel, that you're going to have to um, absolutely know that one. Maybe these three right here. But it doesn't hurt us to know these. Okay, now let me look at H. On my picture, H, very easy. Everyone should probably be able to get that one. This one is, if you can tell on your picture, right here, it's pointing right there to the outside. And we just got through tell, uh, going over this one. This is cell membrane, also called cell wall. Cell membrane or cell wall allows sub allows substances to enter and to leave. Okay, now we are number. Let's see, we are. Uh, this is supposed to be an I. Letter I. It's pointing to um, another structure that we just looked at earlier, just a few moments ago. Very easy, or should be. See if y'all have the answers, and I know I know that y'all do. It's just a drag uh, in the live feed. Nucleus. We have the nucleus. Very good. And then J. Now on J, I want y'all to go ahead and put nucleoplasma on this one because I should have maybe mentioned that to you also. Nucleoplasma. Because it's more specific to the nucleus. And I'm just now remembering that they may um, be more specific in this one with that DNA. If we were to, if we were to Google nucleoplasma, that, that's gonna carry the, the DNA um, gen, um, for the, or the cytoplasm the nucleus of, uh, nucleoplasm is gonna be more specific. So we probably needed to go back and add that into our other notes. And then finally, uh, the very, very, very structure, center structure, which is gonna be more specific than the detailed, I mean, than the less detailed uh, image that we did earlier, that's the nucleolus. So this, this picture is gonna be just a little more, uh, nucleolus. Let me see how to spell that. Uh, I thought I had a paper here. 
Um, let me see. I don't have my phone. I think it's L. Y'all, I think it's L U S. Can somebody confirm that for me? Uh, for K, yes, nucleolus for K. So this is becoming a lot, a lot more specific for the, if this is the outside, if this is the cell, this is the nucleus, this is, this is a lot more specific because right in there is the nucleolus. So it's a lot more specific on this image than what we drew as simple on our other paper. So out of all of these, I would suggest that we just be familiar with these right here. I think those are going to be most specific to your testing. Not a lot of information for us to give you on this portion. It's not something we study quite often. <laughs> it's just one of those things. It's like, oh, no fun. Because it's not something we're talking about all the time. We're working on customer relations and we're working on so many other things. Okay, now let's see. I also gave you, let's see handout with the skull. How many people have, to, oh, and then we had some definitions. Let's go over those definitions first of, and tackle some of those of the, of the foot, the hand, and all of that. I think by now all of y'all kind of caught up right there. And, and like I said, I'm gonna give you all the state board um, multiple choice questions that come straight from the exam. And then I'm going to have y'all study that on that human cell so that we have exactly what they want us to um, answer. Okay, so let's go for the next one, femur. On some of the list of words, y'all wrote down the word femur for part of your assignment. So you're just going to fill in the blank. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's eight definitions, okay? So let's just jot those down real quick. We, we start with the femur. So um, I don't know if any of you uh, know, but Joanna's son was in a really bad accident. And this bone right here, this largest bone right here, the leg, that is the strongest bone in the body. So y'all need to write that down. There's been a lot of controversy between the strongest bone in the body being the jaw or the, or the, le or the femur bone. Um, I, I don't think a test is going to give you both those answers. So it, it, the strongest bone of the body is going to be femur. Hopefully it'll only be on the test or the jaw. It's going to be one of those. And hopefully it won't be both because I'm not sure exactly what I would answer because there's such controversy in that. But the, so it's the bone from the knee to the hip. bone from the knee to the hip, so that's your femur bone. But he broke, uh, Joanna son was in a cat in a, um, in a uh, car wreck, and he broke that bone right there in half and had to have a metal rod put in there. Just went up on a little curb in bank, like a little, you know, where the road goes up and has that little lift right there, and um, uh, jolted the car around, and it, um, <laughs> you look like it. <laughs> You're so funny, Emily. Um, so uh, horrible. Let's see. I trace. I trace the leg backwards on accident. <laughs> That's okay. Hey, you're learning that way, right? Okay. Then we have the patella, and a lot of times we don't call it a patella, but all that is is the kneecap. So the patella is the kneecap. I will tell you, y'all need to know these, um, however many I said there were, three, six, seven, eight, eight or nine of these. These are ones that just you need to know, especially our nail technicians, cosmetologists for sure. Femur, patella, <clears throat> but we do see a fluctuation in all these different bones on all the different exams, so it's better for everyone to know them all. Then we have the, uh, uh, we have the fibula and then the tibia. So the tibia and the fibula. So these are the lower leg bones. 
So you could you could bracket this off. This is our lower leg bones. And can someone tell me um, uh, between the between the two of these, which one is the uh, uh, largest of the two? Is the tibia the largest or the fibula? If you look at your uh, little sketch you had of the leg that Mallory was talking about, her foot goes, her um, image probably goes inward. So, <laughs> but good job everybody. Which of these two bones are the, which one's the larger one? I'm gonna wait and see if anybody is referring back to their leg drawing and can kind of tell me. One person says tibia. Does everybody agree with Chloe or do y'all think that? So, uh, so between these two right here, which one? Tibia. Very, very good. Now, how are we going to remember tibia um, is the largest and uh, fibula is the smaller? We could say, I used to say in school, fibula is flimsy, the FF. Tibia is um, uh, larger. So uh, let me see if there's anything else I want to tell you on that one. Okay. Um, oh, tibia is also known. I had some notes here. It's also known as the shin bone. It's the largest of the lower leg, and it's called the shin bone. So those of you, I don't know how many of you, but I ran track and, hur and hurdles and I would play basketball and I got the worst shin splints. They hurt so bad. So there was too much pressure on those large, on that larger bone of my lower leg. You would think that some of the cushion from my, my backside would have taken some uh, more of the pressure, but apparently my shin bone was getting a lot of it. So the fibula is the smaller of the two of the lower leg, and that's an eye, and it's known as the calf bone. Oh girl, I hope not, they hurt. Oh, they hurt so bad. Sometimes I wonder if it's shoes because I'm kind of cheap on my shoes. I just don't like to spend a lot of money on sneakers. There's too many cute heels to buy. So now let me ask you a question between our tibia and our fibula. If this one is the shin bone and this one is the calf bone, how are you going to remember when you're doing a diagram of the leg, which one is in the inside? and which one's on the outside. So the cap is kind of back here. The shin is right here. So that's gonna tell you that your shin bone is gonna be kind of in this inside right here where your calf bone is gonna be on the outside. So uh, fibula, tibia. Okay, all right, our next one was phalanges. And phalanges is spelled with a P. And at state board, phalanges sometimes are called digits. Okay? It can mean the same. I don't want y'all to see my nasty foot because I need a pedicure in a bad way. But if you look at my foot, um, inner phalanges on our feet. One of the questions, nail technicians, hair stylists, um, on the on the feet, there is a total of fourteen. Okay, so look here. We got we've got two here, but then on each one of these we have. On each one of these, we have three. So three, six, nine, 12, 13, 14. So we have, so what you need to remember, and hopefully me putting my foot up in front of the camera is going to help you to remember that there are 14 in the toes. So 
So everything we're talking about right now is from the hip down. Femur, hip to knee, strongest of the body. Patella, so femur, patella, tibia, fibula, phalanges, and now we have metatarsals. I don't need to write it, well, metatarsals. Okay, so I'm going to put my foot back up. Metatarsals are these long bones right here. So how many of these do we have on, the, on our feet? Take a stab at it. So they're the long slender bones at the top of the foot, the metatarsals. So how many long slender bones do we have? Oh, we got a variety of answers. Ooh. I like the I like the the um, correspondence though. Okay. So we have, look, I can even flex my foot. Watch. Can you see them right there? One. Or maybe you can't see them. Two, three, four. Five. So we have five long, you can put long slender bones. That join the top of the foot to the toe. So look, they're right here on my hand too. See those? One, two, three, four. See that? There's one. See all that when you flex your hand like that? Okay, so that's metatarsals. Now, some people pronounce the next term calcaneus or calcaneus, and, it, and you're going to hear all kinds of pronunciations on it. I say calcaneus, but whatever y'all want to say, I don't care. Calcaneus. The calcaneus is nothing more than the heel, this heel bone right here. And you can get some bone spurs on that, too. <laughs> Jessica. The calcaneus, that's the rear part of the foot where the heel is, okay? And then we have one more, which is the tarsals. That's our ankle. So I'm gonna put my foot back up. All up in here are all these little bones that join together and there's several right up underneath here. And they don't make us list all of those. So we have phalanges. So we have, first of all, let's start over. We have, we have the hip to the knee, which is which bone? Hip to the knee is Oh, baby. So hip to the knee is the femur. And then what's the technical term for the kneecap? Patella. The tibia is the stronger or larger bone known as the shin bone. Fibula is going to be the more fragile, fibia, flimsy, fragile. That's our calf bone. Now, those of you, how many of you ever get, um, how many of you get a, uh, uh, Plantar fasciata. Anybody? Oh, that plantar fasciata. If you do, I'm going to tell you what you can do for it. I have to heal my son all the time for it. No plantar fasciata for anybody? Wow. There are some lucky people out there. Well, okay, so plantar fasciata, um, this right here hurts so bad to like walk on it. Really, really bad. Okay, Jessica, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so where it is though, what the problem is, 
is this right here, all that calf muscle right there is what's so tight. And right now, if y'all flex your foot and it's really, really, really tight, what's happening is all that tension is going in the bottom of the foot right there. You can barely walk, okay? It hurts so bad. I mean, you just can't. So I get a rolling pin, Jessica. I have Ryan lay on his tummy. And a lot of times, Jessica, uh, young kids um, who play video games on their stomach. Um, okay, Reagan. Um, they lay on their tummies and they got their feet propped up on their toes. And they're, they're causing all that tension in the back of the calf. So I get a rolling pin and I press really, really, really hard. And I roll up and down. And it's very, very painful on the calves. Little, I get lotion too, and I work it out first, and then um, because there's like no cures for it, but I am the cure. I am the cure lady. So I get the. Sometimes if I can't find the rolling pin, I get a hairspray can, and I just sort of work it up and down the back of the calf, and in 24 hours, it like goes away. It's, and then I have to do it every every now and then. Wow, that is terrible, Mallory. So if you will massage the calf so hard and take little breaks and massage it and massage it and massage it, it'll go away. But it's extreme, plantar fasciitis is extremely um, painful. Okay, so phalanges are the digits. There's 14 little bones in one foot on... So um, there's going to be 28 total, but state board, don't say that. You want to say 14 in one foot, okay? 14 in the toes. The toes are also called digits. They're called phalanges. Then we have the metatarsals, and they're those, those nice little long slender bones right here on the top of our foot. So you can probably see me flexing right here. And there's, um, there's five of those on one foot. Now the calcaneus. Oh, yeah, no, Jessica, I'm telling you, when you're at the beauty school, I will lay you down on the facial bed, and I will fix you if you're ever that way. Do not know. They try everything, and none of these treatments really work. I'm telling you what, right now, I can help you. Golly. I can't imagine how painful that was, uh, Mallory. Horrible. Okay, so then you have the image of the leg, and I know Mallory cannot wait to um, to. Uh, write her answers down. <laughs> um, so you had, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. You had seven lines of your image that, uh, um, yes, I will. I am a little doctor. I can fix you. No doctor going, you're not going to a doctor for planet fasciata. That's for sure. And Chandler, I can help you with it too. Okay. So you had about oh, seven or eight lines of the leg. So, um, we have those images just to recap um, because you drew it and now you're labeling it and now we're talking about it. And so we're just pushing all that good stuff right there in our brains. So, you know, you've got this, uh, let me see if I can draw it. Now yeah, I know how y'all feel. Oh, isn't that lovely? <laughs> Okay, what is this structure right? Well, we have that line right here, and then we have this line right here, and then we have this. And I'm gonna act like this is right here. Oh, my drawing is horrible. Okay, so this big bone right here, this largest bone right here, you should have labeled femur on your paper. This would be like the calf bone, kind of right here on this outside, that calf bone. That is the fibula because it's more flimsy, but it doesn't seem like it should be. And then the stronger of the bone in the inside of the foot, and that's our tibia, also known as our shin bone. Then we have the calcaneus, the heel bone. We have the metatarsals, those five long bones that go before we get to the digits. And then met, uh, the tarsals are right here, but these are the metatarsals. And then we have the phalanges, and those phalanges are also called digits, and there are 14 digits in 14 uh, little bones in one foot of the toes. 
five long slender bones on the top of the foot, one big, very, very strong bone, calf bone, shin bone, heel bone. Don't y'all love my picture? Now I know how y'all feel. I should have come in here and had it drawn before on a different board. So you should not have any problem labeling those now, now that we've discussed them and getting that turned in at five o'clock. That should not be a problem. That was a pretty easy task. I feel like that's gonna fall again. Okay, all right. So we got that human cell uh, image done. We got the, we got the uh, leg bone down. Now we gotta do that, um, the uh, bones of the skull. And then we're going to be wrapping this up. What time is it? I don't even know. Ooh, we're getting close. Okay. Right here in the front of the skull. Right here. It's one large section right here. And on your image, the side of the, of the, let me see if I can draw this. I'm going to draw it kind of like this. Okay, so right here, this bone right here is the one we're talking about. And it's got like a suture right in here. And what a good, that's our frontal. And sometimes we call it frontalis. I'll type that in um, with my mouse. It's called um, frontalis. Frontal or frontalis. Either way is fine. Don't be confused on a test if they add the IS on the end of that. And then we have in the back of the head, um, you've got this, uh, let me just make sure I get this, yeah. This bone right here. So we have the frontalis or frontal bone. This one right here is called the parietal. The parietal, P-A-R-I-E-T-A-L. Oops, can't see my, my drawing. Let me type it, parietal. I typed it in the chat box for you. And then number three, the lower portion right here, occipital. We refer to that bone quite a bit uh, when sh we shampoo and when we talk about uh, massage and we're, we're massaging the head from back here in the back like that too. We talk about that bone in, uh, quite often uh, when talking to clients. I don't think we really talk about a lot of these other bones, but they're required for your examination. So occipital. And then we have right, um, let's see, on the sides of the head, like right in here, the temporal. And let me see if that, what number that is for y'all. That's number four, the temporal bone, okay? And there are two of those on the sides of the head, the temporal, okay? And then your number five, uh, to the right of the eye socket, like right in here, there's a small little narrow pathway that the arrow on your sheet was pointing to, and that's the sphenoid. S-P-H-E-N-O-I-D, the sphenoid bone. And it's really close to this. Um, it's just slightly above the uh, number seven. Okay, the strong bone down at the bottom of the jaw, like right in here, sorry for my picture, mandible. Okay, and that's our jaw bone. How many mandibles are there? One, and that's our jaw bone. Jaw bone, and you probably want to know both of that, mandible and jaw bone, all, you need to know both of those, that it's the... It's known as the jawbone, mandible. And then your arrow right above the teeth, right back in here, is pointing to the zygomatic. So we talked about this morning. That was the cheekbone, zygomatic, and that is uh, number seven, zygomatic. Let me see what I'm spelling here. And then right above the teeth, remember there's two of these, and that's the maxillary. And that's number eight.
So do I need to write those down again for you and type them or do y'all have them as your answers for your uh, drawing that you did for me? That's okay, Mallory. I knew what you were doing. So frontal, parietal, occipital. I don't know if I'm spelling right. Tem temporal. Y'all got it. Okay. Sphenoid. Mandible. This was also a good review for me. It's been a few weeks since I've studied this. Maxillary. And that gives it, that's all of them. So eight, eight of the cranium there for you to identify. Okay, start logging off for me. I will see y'all at three o'clock. So just uh, start giving me a roll call so that I make sure that I don't miss anybody and I can go over it twice. That way, if I missed a name for any reason at all, I can go back and go over it. So uh, just give me that. I'm going to, after you've written your name, you may sign off and um, I will see y'all at three o'clock. Thanks for your patience with me. I've got a lot going on. I appreciate y'all um, understanding. I'm going to get my roll call sheet out and do that now. I'll see y'all at three. Gracie, are you still online with me? And Sophia, make sure that you got the assignments.
And just so you know, all of the assignments were sent at nine o'clock. So if you send all of those in, and some of them I just gave the answer to, if you send all of the, the assignments in today, that'll be your three hours for the afternoon. I'm going to type that in here right now. I'm just making sure I got everybody on here. Hi, Taylor. Okay, I think I have all of you. Double checking again. Okay, guys, I'm going to end. See y'all at three.